So before we look at God's word, let's um, bow our heads in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we ask you to open your word and teach us this morning whatever you w would like to teach us from this passage of uh, the wise men and um, all the interactions there. Father, we ask that you would challenge us this morning. In our precious Savior's name, amen. So, so this passage that was read to you is the only passage that records the activities of the wise men. I mean, we have four Gospels, so only Matthew records about the wise men. And if you look at this passage, there are three main groups. We have the wise men, the Magi, like some of these guys were dressed up. Then we have in verse 4, another group of very intelligent, powerful people. And those were the chief priests and teachers of the law. So these people were very clever, scholars of the Old Testament. And they had significant influence at that time, so much so that King Herod, Herod the Great, goes to them for advice. And the third is King Herod himself. And like these superheroes, King Herod was extremely troubled by the presence of Jesus. He was troubled that he'll lose his job. He was troubled that this little child would take over his kingdom. But, but let's go to the first group, right? The Magi who came from the East. Following a star. They were astrologers perhaps. High officials. Perhaps royalty because we sing, don't we? You know, we three kings of heaven. And earth. I'm not a good singer. <laughs> and they may have come all the way from Persia in Iran. Or southern you know, Arabia. They might have come from various points in the east and joined up. But this was not a group of three. It was a much larger group. Bible never says there were three people who came, but they brought three griffs. So we assume that there were three, or we thought we did. If you draw a straight line between Iran and Jerusalem, that's over a thousand miles. Or 1,700 kilometers. And they came on camel's back. Took them several months. It's a perilous trip. They were bearing expensive gifts. Bandits on the route. En route. It was an arduous trip. In that the terrain was rough. You didn't have highways. It was all dirt road. They were following a star. And they kept going. They were following this star by faith. Why? Because something has told them, follow that star and it will come and stop at the feet of Jesus. They came to worship this king of the Jews. Just, just picture this, folks. Imagine this group of people, day after day, week after week, month after month, following this star. I wonder what other people thought of these people. Hey, where are you off? I'm following that star. Stargazers, they might have ridiculed them. I wonder what they thought themselves. Is this star ever going to stop? Have we made a mistake? Is this real? Is it worth it? Is it worth doing all that just to see a child and worship? But they kept the eye on the star by faith and followed. And in verse 11, 
of the passage that was absolutely brilliantly read. It's a long passage. You did a brilliant job reading all that. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. So here we read, they came to a house and they saw a child. Okay, so, so baby Jesus was not a baby anymore. He was a child, perhaps several months old, perhaps a year old. We know that he was probably less than two years old because of what King Herod did afterwards in trying to get rid of Jesus. They see this baby. They bow down and worship Jesus in absolute humility, recognizing who this child was. These were royalty, astrologers, big time people worshiping a child. They gave Jesus gifts. They gave him gold. Gold that is usually used or given as gifts to a king. Acknowledging this, is, this little child as their king. They gave him incense. What you would burn in a temple to worship God. Acknowledging Jesus as their God. And they gave a very unusual gift, myrrh. And that's embalming oil or burial balm. Extremely unusual gift to give a child. You would think it was very inappropriate gift. But they still presented the child with myrrh. Acknowledging this child as their savior. That Jesus one day would die on the cross. As a permanent atonement for sin. And they acknowledge that in their gifts. One who would die for the sins of the whole world. This child, when this child grows up. Jesus my King. Jesus my God. Jesus my Savior. A real loud statement from these wise men. And in verse 12, we find in a dream, they were told to go another way. They meet Jesus and they were asked to change course. They were asked to change their direction. And they were happy to listen. They were happy to obey. Friends, these magi, these wise men tell me a lot about Christians. It's it's yours and my journey today, in today's world. This is what a Christian does. Our calling and our walk is not easy. It's long. It's grueling. There's hardships and ridicule en route. There's disappointments. Times of failure. But it is a walk by faith. Looking unto Jesus. Until we come into his presence one day. And that's what the Bible promises all of us here today as Christians. That one day we will see Jesus. And we will worship him face to face. What a huge promise. What a wonderful promise. In his presence one day. Worshipping him. Like these wise men friends. Whenever we have a deep encounter with Christ. It often changes our direction. We are often asked to take another route. We are often asked to go another way. For the wise men it was in a dream. For us, it could be a life event that changes our course. It could be God's word when we read it. It could be a prompting when we pray. It could be another Christian who's telling us. Would we listen? 
and would we obey? Lots of little interesting lessons from the story about Weissman. Then friends, there was this other group. Chief priests and teachers of the law. I'll tell you their indifference and their apathy for Christ was absolutely amazing. On one hand, we have a group of people traveling all that way to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Here was another group in Jerusalem, just around the corner from Bethlehem. And their apathy was absolutely amazing. This passage tells us they knew where to find Jesus. They quoted from Micah 5.2 saying, of course, in Bethlehem of Judea. So they knew where Jesus was. They knew who Jesus is. They said, he's the ruler. Shepherd of my people Israel. They were in Jerusalem. Bethlehem about 60 k's away. So close, but yet so far. They just to chose to ignore Jesus. Had head knowledge. They knew the scripture inside out, so much so that they could quote it. But miss Jesus. Friends, one can know the Bible inside out. There are many people like this today with head knowledge of Christ. They know where to find him. They know how to find him. But it's been pushed aside. Another day. A better opportune moment. They know the word. They know who Jesus is. More than happy to miss the boat. Choose to ignore. Coming so close, but yet so far. And finally, there was this King Herod. He was like the superheroes. By human standard, he was a great king. He had rebuilt the temple in Jerusalem. He had done a lot of construction. And he was a fearsome king. He was barbaric. He would protect his, his interest at any cost. History tells us Herod the Great killed his wife. Got rid of three of his sons. Because they were a threat to his kingdom. Got rid of other relatives. Got rid of various officialdom. And we see this guy was willing to protect himself at all costs. Just hearing about Jesus instills fear in his heart. Will I lose control? Will I lose my kingdom? And as the wise men worshipped, Herod was plotting. Plotting to get rid of Jesus. Such a, such a pathetic, evil plan is rolled out. And all the children under two years of age and below, in Bethlehem and the surrounds, are put to death. Orders the murder of all boys, not children, all boys. Turns this beautiful place to a place of bloodshed and tears. Friends, there are people here, not in this congregation, elsewhere, who are openly hostile to the gospel. You see that. You see that rolled out in the media. You see that rolled out in other spheres of life. They're there to destroy the message of the gospel. So this Christmas, I would like you to think about in which camp 
you may belong. Are you like the Magi on this hard road, but a road full of hope? The road that eventually leads to the feet of Christ. Would you be, God forbid, in the other camp where you might have all the head knowledge? You might know who Jesus is. You would know how to find him. But yet for some reason ignore and put that decision away. May I, may I ask you this Christmas that if you are still questioning, still looking at alternatives, still want to differ, that you would make that call today, that you would make that call this Christmas and come to follow Jesus. Amen.